and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland and this is Jason's Bedtime Storytime. I hope you're well and please only listen when you can safely close your eyes and if you're ready to go, bye-byes, go bye-byes. So get yourself nice and comfy, boys and girls, and um, we're going to do a lovely... Uh, Lovely violent vintage fairy tale for you to have a really good night's sleep. Because that's what all little children need is a nice violent story just before they go to sleep. Yeah. So here we go. This one, and it's a, I, it's adapted by myself, so it's not going to be a verbatim. It's the little, the, the little smelly good mouse. Okay. And it's about a mouse helps protect a happy queen from a jealous king. So, if you don't like mice, then um, I don't really care. I mean, I, I just you know, it's about a mouse. So you might not want to um, hear about a mouse if you're not into mice. I want to say into mice. I don't mean in a an arrestable way. Just. You know, I'll just get on with it. So, this is, according to this, it's a vintage fairy tale. May contain violence. Um, and if you're if you're a a, a parent about to let your little special um, wonderful, precious child, listen to this. Maybe you should read or you should listen to it first before. Oh, what's that? Um, uh, it's okay. I just got a text message. Anyway. Um, back to uh, focusing. So this is a story, and I'm going to read it out to you now. So we'll get ready, co nice and cozy. Maybe you've had your hot chocolate or cocoa, or you know, um, been to the toilet, brushed your teeth, and you know you're just getting ready to maybe let off a nice big fart. So get ready, and we're going to do the story now. Great. Okay, here we are. Once upon a time, there lived a king and a queen who loved each other so much that they were never happy unless they were together. Bit needy, really, isn't it? So, it's so like, come on. I mean, that's like a puppy, isn't it? Oh, I gotta have you near me all the time. No. Hmm. Anyway, day after day, they went out hunting or fishing. Night after night, they went to balls or to the opera. They sang and danced and ate sugar plums and were the gayest of all the, the gays. What, that's what it says. And all their subjects followed their example. So that the kingdom was called the joyous land. Okay. Now, in the next kingdom, everything was as different as it could possibly be. The king was sulky and savage and never enjoyed himself at all. He looked so ugly and cross that all his subjects feared him, and he hated the very sight of a cheerful face. Don't sound very nice, do we? Not really. Not really. Not really sound very nice, does he? 
Is this going to be about him, this story? I don't know. Let's keep listening. So, if he ever caught anyone smiling, he had him punished that very minute. This kingdom was very appropriately called the Land of Tears. Very literal, aren't they? Very literal. Um, hmm. Doesn't really give a lot of scope for change, though, does it? This is now called the Land of Tears. Everyone has to be miserable here. This is the joyous land. Everyone is happy. But what I like, but I like the Land of Tears. But I'm a happy person. But I like it there because they got a really nice lake, and they got a McDonald's. And I want, I like, you know, the Land of Joyous Land. That's just Burger King. I don't, I don't, I've got nothing against Burger King. Don't get me wrong. But I prefer McDonald's. But why can't I be there? I'm happy, I'm happy. But it's the land of tears. But I want a McDonald's. Um, anyway. Now, when this wicked king heard of the happiness of the Jolly King, he was so jealous that he collected a great army and set out to fight him. Come on, put him up, put him up. Come on, let's have a punch up. And the news of his approach was soon brought to the king and queen. The queen, when she heard of it, was frightened out of her wits and began to cry bitterly. Sire, she said, let us collect all our riches and run away as far as ever we can to the other side of the world. But the king answered, Fay, madam, I am far too brave for that. It is better to die than to be a coward. Then he assembled no, then he assembled all his army men, and after bidding the queen a tender farewell, he mounted his splendid horse and rode away. They always have splendid horses, don't even notice that. It looks like and he got on his crappy old horse. Oh, I only had I only had two legs. It was a crappy piece of crap. No, it's all that you splendid. Oh, I splendid horse. Mm, yeah. Mm. Anyway, then he assembled all his armed men, and after bidding the queen a tender farewell, he mounted his splendid horse and he rode away. I've already said that bit, haven't I? Sorry. He did it twice. He rode away, came back, got off, had a poo. Then he got back and he and he got back on his splendid horse and he rode away again. Because back then, he just had a really dodgy curry. When he was lost to sight, the lost to sight, the queen, she couldn't see him anymore. That's what they mean, isn't it? When the queen couldn't see him anymore, the queen could do nothing but weep. And wring her hands and cry. How do you wring your hands? You can wring a flannel, can't you? And the water comes out. Or wring uh, like a sponge, and you know, to get the water out. How can you wring your hands? What happens? What do, nothing comes out. Unless you've got really watery hands. Unless you're made of water. Which apparently we are though, aren't we? Are we like 90... 900% water or something, aren't we? Mm. Alas, if the king is killed, what will become of me and my little daughter? Um, and she... <laughs> what the hell was that? And she was so sorrowful that she could neither eat nor sleep. The king sent her a letter every day. But at last... One morning, as she looked out of the palace window, she saw a messenger approaching in hot haste. Why can't you say fast? It was approaching fast. Obviously on another really brilliant horse. Why didn't they get the train? Or get a car? Get a taxi? That would be easier. And then this is the queen again. What news, courier? 
What news? cried the queen, and he answered, The battle is lost and the king is dead, and in another moment the enemy will be here. Which is a bit of a weird way to communicate, but hey. And the queen, the queen said, What did you say? The battle is lost and the king is dead, and in another, and in another moment the enemy will be here. Oh, I thought that's what you said. Bit of a weird way to say it. What do you mean, Your Majesty? I'm just letting you know what I've been sent to tell you. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a bit of a strange way to do it, though, isn't it, really? I mean, you know, could you just have said it? Could have handed me the scroll? Why did you have to sing it to me like that? And what's with the dancing? I mean, I haven't seen anyone break dance since 1983. Well, now you have. By the way, your majesty, could you please lead me to the way to the nearest toilet? Because I need a boo, a big, 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 big poo. I've been on a horse for 14 days. And I think I really, really, really need a poo. Either that or I'm pregnant. Really, 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 really. Beep, 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 beep. Stop it, please. Stop it now. Just talk us over there on the left. This is just, it's the well. We just use it as a toilet as well. <laughs> as well, get it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. we just use the, you use the well as a toilet? But where do you do it from, your majesty? Well, it's the same place, really. It's okay, it's fine. Okay, your majesty. Bit weird, but there you go. You can have a little drink if you like when you're finished. No, you're fine, thank you very much. I can't stop the singing. Um, got old really quick, didn't it? It was mildly amusing. Not mildly, like, I don't know, 2% amusing when I first started, and then it just got a bit. It's a little bit embarrassing, really, wasn't it? A little bit embarrassed. I'm sorry about that. <sighs> but it wasn't me doing it. Uh, that wasn't me. So, the poor queen fell back insensible. Whatever that means. And all her ladies carried her to bed. All her ladies... That gives the impression that she was quite heavy, doesn't it? Mm. And stood around her, weeping and wailing. Wow. Well, they must have had a pretty special relationship with the with the king, if they were weeping and wailing. What is wailing? Then began a tremendous noise. And confusion. And they knew, they really knew, that the enemy had arrived. And very soon they heard the king himself stamping about the palace, seeking the queen. Then her ladies put the little princess into her arms. First time meant. They've never mentioned the princess before, have they? Hmm. And covered her up. Unless she just gave birth. Maybe they just thought, well, she gave birth, but we don't mention that. It's just it's not that important, is it? It's just a baby. Just weird. Thought that'd be worth mentioning. Unless, of course, it was the. Uh, it was, actually, it was the. I say it wasn't a poo and it was a baby. Ah, oh, no, never mind. Oh dear, I don't know where I was going with that. And so they covered the baby up, head and all, in the bedclothes. The bedclothes. 
and ran for their lives, and the poor queen lay there shaking and hoping she would not be found. But very soon, the wicked king clattered into the room, and in a fury, because the queen would not answer when he called her, he tore back her silken coverings and tweaked her and I tweaked off her lace cap and when all her lovely hair came tumbling down over her shoulders he wound it three times around his hand and threw her over his shoulder where he carried her like a sack of flour I'm not sure if this is getting romantic or not I don't know it might have been romance back then. Wrapping her hair three times round his hand and then carrying her like a bag of flour. I mean, that was almost poetry, isn't it? The poor queen held her little daughter safe in her arms and shrieked for mercy. But the wicked king only mocked her. <laughs> You're shrieking. <laughs> and begged her to go on shrieking as it amused him. That's a bit cruel, isn't it? And so he mounted his great black horse. Um, he mounted, she mounted his great black horse? No, she, he mounted his great black, black big... Blah, blah, blah. He mounted his great black horse. Another, is that always great? It's a great horse. It's magnificent. Just a horse. And rode back to his own country. When he got there, he declared that he would have the queen and the little, pr and the little, and the little princess imprisoned. And when I'm able to talk properly, I will continue. But his courtiers said that they seemed a pity. That seemed pity for when the baby grew up, she would be a very nice wife for the king's only son. The king was rather pleased with this idea and shut the queen up in the highest room of a tall tower, which was very tiny and miserably furnished with a table and a very hard bed upon a floor. Then he sent her for a fairy, who lived near his kingdom, and after receiving her with more politeness than he generally showed, and entertaining her at a sumptuous feast, he took her up to see the queen. The fairy was so touched by the sight of her misery that when she kissed her hand, she whispered, Courage, madam, I think I'll see a way to help you. very fairy-like, wasn't it? The queen, a little comforted by these words, received her graciously and begged her to take pity upon a poor little princess who had met with such a sudden reverse of fortune. But the king got very cross when he saw them whispering together and cried harshly, Make an end of these fine speeches, madam. I brought you here to tell me if the child will grow up pretty and fortunate. Then the fairy answered the princess. He said that she would be very pretty. He answered that the princess would be very pretty and clever and busty and have a very hairy knees. And... And, uh well brought up as it was possibly could be and the old king growled to the queen that it was lucky for her that it was so as they would certainly have been punished if it was otherwise so if she didn't have hairy knees he would have been very unhappy because the one thing he wished for his future son his prince the future king is that he should be married to a hairy-kneed princess. 
Then he stamped off, taking the fairy with him. Obviously over his shoulder like a bag of flour, which was what he liked to do. And uh, the queen was just left there in tears. She said, uh, How can I wish my little daughter to grow up pretty if she is to be married to that horrid little dwarf, the king's son? She said to herself. And yet, if she is ugly, we shall both be killed. If I could only hide her away somewhere, so that the cruel king could never find her. Why she said it out loud, I've no idea, because there's no one else around to listen. Um, but yeah, there you go. I mean, if you sounded like that, would you want to actually ever hear yourself? I don't know. I don't know. As the days went on, besides, he wasn't a dwarf. He was just four years old. He didn't realise he was a bit, you know, didn't have a huge education. As the days went on, the queen and the little princess grew thinner and thinner for their hard-hearted gola, old jailer, <laughs> jailer gave them every day only three boiled peas <laughs> sorry <laughs> three three boil <laughs> oh dear Th three boiled peas <laughs> It's ridiculous. It's not the most ridiculous part of the story, but come on, three. That's a bit specific, a bit specific, and a bit silly. Three boiled peas and a tiny morsel of black bread. <laughs> black bread is not mouldy bread, is it? So they're always terribly hungry. If a little baby would die, the little baby wouldn't be able to survive on that. Not even an adult can survive very long on that. Three peas? You could fit you could fit three peas up one nostril. And I've tried. Many times. In fact I've got I've got about seven peas up my left nostril right now. So here we go. Where are they? So yeah, they both got very thin. At last, one evening, as the queen sat at her spinning wheel. Because back then, everyone had spinning wheels, didn't they? For the king was so avaricious that she was made to work all day and night. She saw a tiny, pretty little mouse creep out of a hole and said to it, Alas, little creature! What are you coming to look for here? I only have... <laughs> Sorry. I just, I'm just looking at what I'm about to read. Okay. I only have... I only have three peas for my day's provision. <laughs> oh my God. Not only does she only get three peas, but she spreads it out throughout the day. She spreads the three peas. Through the day, so just eat them all in one go. I mean, that'd be a lot, wouldn't it? To, oh, blimey. I mean, you wouldn't be able to produce poo, would you, if that's all you ate? You'd be just pooing air. You'd just be going, it'd just be sitting down, and it'd just be a fart, wouldn't it? And then, like, well, that's it. Like a green, <laughs> a pea, pea flavoured fart. Um, Oh, yeah, she says, uh, Alas, little creature, what are you coming to look for here? I only have three peas for my day's provision, so unless you wish to fast, you must go elsewhere. But the mouse ran hither and thither, and danced and capered so prettily that at last the king gave it her last pea. The queen gave it her last pea which she was keeping for her supper. 
saying, Hey, little, little one, eat it up. Yum, 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 yum. I have nothing better to offer you, but I give this willingly in return for all the amusement that I have had from you. She had hardly spoken when she saw upon the table a delicious little roast partridge and two dishes of preserved fruit. Truly, she said. <laughs> She's very dr dramatic, isn't she? Truly, she said. A kind action never goes unrewarded. And, <laughs> and she and the little princess ate their supper with great satisfaction. <laughs> and then... <clears throat> The queen gave what was left to the little mouse, who danced better than ever afterwards. Whatever that means. The next morning came with the jailer. He came and um, he came with the queen's allowance of three peas, which he brought in upon a large dish to make them look even smaller. But as soon as he set it down, the little mouse came and ate up all three so that when the queen wanted her dinner, there was nothing left for her. She was quite provoked, and she said, What a bad little beast that mouse must be! If he goes on like this, I shall be starved! But then, when she glanced at the dish again, it was covered with all sorts of nice things to eat, and the queen made a very good dinner. Mmm! and was gayer than usual over it. But afterwards, as she sat at her spinning wheel, she began to consider what would happen if the little princess did not grow up pretty enough to be pleasing the king. And she said to herself, Oh, if I could only think of some way of escaping. And, she sp and um, as she spoke, she saw the little mouse playing in a corner with some long straws. And the queen took them and began to plait them, saying, If only I had a straws enough, I would make a basket with them and let my baby down in it from the window. You know, to, like, like a little little thingy thing to let it down, like a lift, like an elevator thing. Uh, to any kind passerby who would take care of her. Now, by the time the straws were all plaited, the little mouse had dragged in more and more. Until the queen had plenty to make her basket. And she worked at it day and night, while the little mouse danced for her amusement. And at dinner and supper time the queen gave it the three peas and the bit of black bread and always found something good in a dish in their place. She really could not imagine where all the things, all these lovely foodie things came from. Mmm. And at last... At last, one day, when the basket was finished, the queen was looking out of the window to see how long a cord she must make to lower it to the bottom of the tower. She noticed an old little old lady, very, very little, little, really little old lady, Although from the tower she probably looked little, she may have actually been nineteen foot tall, and was leaning upon her stick and looking up at her. Presently, she said, I know you're in trouble, madam. If you like, I will help you. Oh, my friend, said the queen, if you really wish to be one of us, you will come at the time that I will appoint, and you can help me. 
and they will let down my my poor little baby in the basket. If you take her and bring her up to me, and when I am rich, I will reward you splendidly. I'll give you some money. That's what I mean. I don't care about the reward," said the old la- old lady. But there, 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 there is one, mm, mm, there is one thing I, um, I should like. Uh, mm, mm, you must know that I, I, I'm very, very, mm, mm, I'm very particular about what I eat. Mm, mm, mm. And and if there's one thing that I that I fancy above all lovers, it's a plum, a nice, a nice tender, tender, little, plump, not plump, plump, tender little mouse, a plump mouse. If there is, if there is such a thing, such a thing in in your garret, if if yeah, up there with you, if there, if there's if there's such a thing as a nice plump little mouse, throw it down to me, won't you? Throw it down, and and, and in return, I will promise you that your your little daughter shall be well taken. Ooh, well taken care of. Mm, go on, dear, go and check it down to me. <laughs> well, the queen, when she when she heard what the old lady said, she began to cry. And uh, she was a bit confused about how the old lady was saying, well, you must know what I'm... Uh, what I like to eat. I mean, how was she going to... She'd never seen her before. Anyway. But she made no answer. She didn't answer. She didn't answer the lady because... Um, it really didn't know what to say. You know, she had a bit of a confused kind of moment. But the old lady, after waiting a few minutes, asked her what was the matter. Why? said the queen. There's only one mouse in this garret, and it is, it's such a such a dear, pretty little thing that I cannot bear to think of it being killed. <laughs> Cried the old lady. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> what a stupid sound. What a stupid sound that was. What? <laughs> Said the, um, cried the old woman in a rage. Do you care for a miserable mouse more than your own baby? Goodbye, madam. I, uh, uh, I leave you to enjoy its company. <laughs> and from my own part, I thank my stars that I can get plenty of mouse. I can get mice without you, without troubling you to get them for me. And she hobbled off, grumbling and growling. <sighs> God, it's knackering. Um, not very, prof- <laughs> not very professional, is it? Sorry. Um, so the queen, the queen, was, the queen was very disappointed that, in uh, spite of finding a better dinner than usual, and seeing the little mouse dancing in its merriest mood, she could do nothing but cry. That night, when the baby was fast asleep, she packed it into the basket and wrote on a slip of paper. This unhappy little girl is called Delicia. Really? 
Delicia. Okay. Um, and she pinned it to the robe. She pinned it to the baby's robe. And then very sadly, she was shutting the basket. When in sprang the little mouse and sat on the baby's pillow. And did a poo. Oh, little one, said the queen. It cost me dear to save your life. How shall I know now whether my delicia is being taken care of or not? Anyone else would have just let the greedy old woman have you and eat you up. Yum, yum, yum. Cobble, 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 cobble. But I could not bear to do it. Because I am a hero. I really am. There's a hero. If you look inside my bum. Although it's very smelly all year round. Oh, no, never mind. Whereupon the mouse answered. Believe me, madam. You will never win. <clears throat> Believe me, madam. You will never repent of your kindness. That's, <laughs> that's the mouse. The queen was immensely astonished when the mouse began to speak. Because everything else that had happened up till now was absolutely normal. And, I mean, the mouse... Okay, let's just get this right, okay? Let's just get this right. So the mouse was fetching food, feeding her banquets, basically, every day. And then brought her material in which to make a basket for her little baby. And now she's astonished because the mouse is speaking. I'll be amazed if the mouse didn't speak. <sighs> so she was astonished that the mouse was speaking. And still more so when she saw its little sharp nose turn into a beautiful face. And its paws and hands into feet. Paws... His paws turn into hands and feet, so it, it suddenly grew tall, and the queen recognised the fairy who had come with the wicked king to visit her. Oh, it was, a, it was a fairy all along. So it wasn't actually a mouse, it was the fairy. Okay, okay. The fairy smiled at her astonished look and said, I want to see if you are faithful and capable of feeling a real friendship for me. For when you see fairies, you know, we are rich in everything but friends. And those are hard to find. It's not possible that you should want for friends. You chant... Oh, no. Okay. Wrong, wrong voice. It's not possible that you should want for friends. You're a charming creature, said the queen, kissing her. Wetly on the lips. <laughs> Indeed it is so, the queen, the fairy said. For those who are only friendly with me for their own advantage, I do not count at all. But when you care for the poor little mouse, you could not have known there was anything to be gained by it. And to try you further, I took the form of the old woman whom you talked to from the window. And then I was convinced that you really loved me. But did that was nothing to gain from the mouse. The mouse was given a food every day. Of course there was something to be gained from loving the mouse. I'd love a mouse. If... I've got a mouse, some stupid mouse in the kitchen, probably. If that served me up a, like a roast dinner, if I woke up every day to a, a fully cooked breakfast, had a nice cup of tea and some toast, 
I'd love the mouse as well. Anyway. That's my life. So she said, oh, she turned to the little princess, the fairy. She kissed her rosy little lips three times, saying, Dear little one, I promise that you shall be richer than your father and shall live a hundred years, always pretty and happy, without fear of old age and wrinkles. The queen was quite delighted, thanked the fairy grandfully, gratefully, and begged her to take charge of the little Delicia and bring her up as her own daughter. This she agreed to do, and then they shut the basket and lowered it carefully, baby and all, to the ground at the foot of the tower. The fairy then changed herself back into the form of a mouse, and this delayed her few seconds, after which she ran nimbly down the straw ropes, only to find when she got to the bottom that a baby had disappeared. In the greatest terror she ran up to the queen crying, All is lost. My enemy Kekalin, Kenkalin, has stolen the princess away. You must know that she is a, f she is a cruel fairy who hates me. And as she is older than I am, and she has more power than me because that, and I can do nothing against her. I know no way of rescuing Delicia from her clutches. When the queen heard this terrible news, she was heartbroken and begged the fairy to do all she could to get the poor little princess back again. At this moment in came the jailer. When he missed the little princess, he realised that she wasn't there. He had once told the king, who came in with a great fury, asking what the queen had done with her. She answered that the fairy, whose name she did not know, had come and carried her off by force. Upon this, the king stamped upon the ground and cried in a terrible voice, You shall be punished! I we all I always told you you should And without any word he dragged the unlucky queen out into the nearest wood and climbed up into a tree to look for somewhere to which he could leave her. Climbed up into a tree to look for somewhere where he could leave her. In a tree? I think he just like high ground, didn't he? Towers, trees. He's like the opposite of someone who's scared of heights. He's scared of ground, maybe. But when he was quite high up, the fairy, who had made herself invisible and followed them, gave him a sudden push. Pushed him, pushed him, pushed him so hard which made him lose his footing and fall to the ground with a crash and a break in four of his teeth. And while he was trying to mend them, the fairy carried the queen off into her flying chariot to a beautiful castle where she was so kind to her. But uh, for the loss of Delicia the queen, would have been perfectly happy, but she couldn't get over that. She was so sad. But though the good little mouse did her very utmost, they could not find out where Kankalin had hidden the little princess. I just want to go back to the king being pushed out of the tree. This is a sentence. He fell to the ground with a crash and broke four teeth. And while he was trying to mend them. Mend? How do you mend your teeth? What, did he have some super glue on him? Was he a dentist? I mean, you know, do you, you know it's, there's a lot of missing information. It doesn't give everything you need, I don't think. Anyway. 
So we're going to skip ahead 15 years now, boys and girls. And the queen had somewhat recovered from her grief. When the news reached her that a son of the wicked king wished to marry the little maiden who kept the turkeys. Um, it's not that was a euphemism. And that she had refused him. The wedding dresses had been made. Nevertheless. And the festivities were to be so splendid that all the people for leagues around were flocking in to be present at them. The queen felt quite curious about a little turkey maiden who did not wish to be queen. So the little mouse conveyed herself to the poultry yard to find out what she was like. She found the turkey maiden sitting upon a big stone, barefooted and miserably dressed in an old coarse linen gown and cap. The ground at her feet was all strewn with robes of gold and silver, ribbons and laces, diamonds and pearls, over which the turkeys were stalking to and fro, while the king's ugly, disagreeable son stood opposite her, declaring angrily that if she would not marry him, she would be killed. The turkey maiden answered proudly, I will never marry you. You are too ugly and too much like your cruel father. Leave me in peace with my turkeys, which I like far better than all of your fine gifts. The little mouse watched her with the greatest admiration, for she was as beautiful as the spring. And soon, as soon as the wicked prince was gone, she took the form of an old peasant woman and said to her, Good day, my pretty one. You have a fine flock of cock and turkeys there. The young turkey maid turned her gentle eyes upon the old woman and answered, Yet they wish to leave me to become a miserable queen. What is your advice upon the matter? My child, said the fairy, a crown is a very special thing, but you know neither the price nor the weight of it. I know well, I know very, very well, very well that I have refused to wear one, said the little maiden. Though I don't know who was my father, or who was my mother, and I am not a friend, I have no friend in the whole world. You have goodness and beauty which are of more value than ten kingdoms, said the white fairy, the wise fairy, rather. But tell me, child, how come you're here, and how it is, how is it that you have neither father, nor mother, nor friend? Well, <laughs> well a fairy called Cantleen is the cause of my being here, answered the turkey woman. For while I lived here with her, I got nothing but blows and harsh words, until at last I could bear it no longer, and I ran away from her, knowing where I was going, and as I came through the wood, the, w the wicked prince met me and offered to give me a charge of the poultry yard. Gave me a job, he did. Gave me a job. I was ever so, ever so grateful. I, I accepted gladly, not knowing that I should have to see him day by day. 
I'm really glad he saved my life and gave me somewhere to live and gave me a job and some independence. But I just didn't want to have to look at him. I didn't want to have to look at his, his funny face. No, I didn't. Mm. Mm. And, and now he wants to marry me. But what? Marry me? But what? Um, what? But what, what? I will never. I will never consent to it. I never. I will never allow it to happen. Upon hearing this, the fairy became convinced that the little turkey maiden was none other than Princess Delicia. Join the dots. Join the dots. What is your name, little one? She said. She could have just started off with that, couldn't she? Save the rest. Like, what's your name? You know, right straight away. What's your name? I am. <clears throat> I am called Delicia. If it please you, she replied. Then the fairy threw her arms around the princess princess's neck and nearly smothered her with kisses and saying, "Oh, Delicia." I'm very, very, very I'm, an, I'm an old, very old friend of yours, and I'm truly glad to find you at last. But you might not look nicer than you do in that old gown. Um, you know, you don't look that great, you know, that's what I'm saying, you're a bit smelly. But, you know, you're looking after turkeys, you're not going to smell brilliant. Uh, perhaps you could have a bath once in a while, I mean, you know, you know water's not that expensive. Uh, you got the well, yes, yeah, a bit of a weird well, yeah, it's a bit smelly well, and people do weird things in it, but you can give, give it a try. Which is, uh, but you could dress nicely. Uh, take this pretty dress and let me see the difference it will make. So Delicia took off the ugly cap. <laughs> the ugly cap. Took off all her ugly, smelly clothes. And shook all her out her fine, shiny hair and bathed her hands and face in clear water from the nearest well. The water was kind of a bit brown, but it's okay. And her cheeks were like roses. What colour roses? Very, very spiky, very thorny cheeks she had. And when she was adorned with the diamonds and the splendid robe that the fairy had given her, she looked the most beautiful princess in the world. And the fairy, with great delight, cried, Now you look as you ought to look, Delisha. What do you think about it yourself? And Delisha answered, I feel as if I were the daughter of some great king. And would you be glad if you were? said the fairy. I suppose so, she answered. Ah oh, well, said the fairy, tomorrow I may have some pleasant news for you. So she hurried back to her castle where the queen sat busy with her embroidery and cried. She was crying and crying. <sighs> she said, the fairy said, Well, madam, will you wager your thimble and your golden needle that I am bringing you the best news you could possibly hear? Alas, said the queen, since the death of the jolly king and the loss of my delicia, all the news in the world is not worth a pin to me. Then there, don't be, don't, there, 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 don't be melancholy, said the fairy. I assure you that the princess is quite well, and I have never seen her equal for her beauty. Very beautiful indeed. She might be a queen tomorrow if she chose, but then, you know, you don't know. And then the fairy disappeared. So the queen was pretty, pretty, pretty happy about that. And she said to herself, I will not hear of it. 
I will not hear of it. Oh, my wonderful daughter, marrying a wicked king's son. Let us go at once and bring her here. In the meantime, the wicked prince, who was very angry with Delicia, very, very angry, had sat himself down under a tree and cried and howled with rage and spite until the king heard him and cried out of the window. You shut up. Stop that crying. You annoying little boy. What is the matter with you? What do you, oh, what do you, what do you, why are you, why are you making all of that disturbance? The prince replied, It's, it's because, uh, oh, no, it's because of the, the turkey maiden. She will not love me, daddy. She will not love me. Oh, I'm so full of love, but she will not love me. She will not let me love her. I don't know what to do, father. I don't know what to do. I have so much love to give, so much love to share, but she will not take my love. She will not. All she sees is this funny face that I have. Oh, she keeps saying, oh, your funny face, and I, she smells really bad. She, she's a turkey. She smells like a turkey, but I don't mind. I just, I just want to share my love with her. Hmm. But she won't take my love. She won't accept my love, father. She won't take my love. I just want to love her. Shut up, son. I'm trying to sleep. So, uh... The king said, Won't love you, eh? I won't love you, hmm? We will very soon see about that. So he, uh, so he called his guards. Oh, car, guards, come here. See if I don't make her change her mind pretty soon. And the wicked uh, king went and searched for her at the poultry yard. And he could find nobody there but Delicia, who, with her splendid dress, and her crown of diamonds looked such a lovely princess that they hardly dared to speak to her. But she said to them very politely, Pray tell me what you are looking for here. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is it do you require? What do you, what do you want? Madam, they answered, we are sent for an, for an insignificant little person called Delicia. Alas, said she, that is my name. Who, who can you want with me? What, what can you, what can you want with me? What, what, what do you want? Oh, me, oh, my, hmm, what you, how dare you, how dare you come up to me? Me, 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 how dare you? Approach me in such a manner, you insolent child. You're just a little monkey. You're a little monkey boy. Go away. Go, go away, you monkey boy. How dare you approach me? I'm a princess. I'm a princess. And um, so the guy, the guards, tied her hands and feet with thick ropes for fear that she may run away, and brought her to the king who was waiting with his son. When he saw her there, he was very much astonished at her beauty, which would have made anyone less hard-hearted sorry for her. But the wicked king only laughed and mocked at her, and cried, Well, little fright, oh, little, little toad, little, 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 little girly, little girly, little toady girly, oh, little cry, you cry, 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 boo hoo, boo hoo 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 hoo, you cry, cry, baby, you, hoo, why don't you love my son? Why don't you, eh? Why don't you love my son? Who, 
who is far too handsome and too good for you, uh, make haste and begin to love him this instant, or you shall be tarred and feathered. Mm, go on, love him, now, this instant. Get on with it. Then the poor little princess, shaken with terror, went down on her knees, crying. Oh, don't tar and tether me, please. It would be so uncomfortable. <laughs> Having boiling hot tar poured all over you. Oh, so uncomfortable. Let me have two or three days to make up my mind, and then you shall do as you like with me, please. Future father, I love you. The wicked prince would have very much liked to see her tarred and feathered, because he was a little bit strange. But the king ordered that she should be put up into a dark dungeon, shut up and locked away. And it was just at this moment that the queen and the fairy arrived in the flying chariot. They just chucked that in, didn't they? A flying chariot. Just like it's okay, like it's normal. Everyone else is on horses. Not them. Like, just like, like it's nothing. Yeah, they just turned up in a flying chariot. And the queen was dreadfully distressed at the turn affairs had taken and said miserably that she was destined to be unfortunate all her days. But the fairy bade her to take courage. All paid him out yet. I will all paid him out yet, she nodded. Her head with an air of great determination. Not quite sure what I'll pay them out yet meant. That very same night, as soon as the wicked king had gone to bed, the fairy changed herself into the little mouse again, and creeping upon his pillow, nibbled his ear, so that he squealed out quite loudly, and turned over on his other side. But that was no good for the little mouse. Only set to work, and he set to work and gnawed away at the second ear, until it hurt more than the first one. Then the king cried, Murder! And, and thieves! And all his guards ran to that matter. They wanted to see what was going on, really. But they could find nothing and nobody, for the little mouse had run off to the prince's room and was serving him in exactly the same way. All night long she ran from one to the other, and at last until at last, driven quite frantic by terror and want of sleep, the king rushed out of the palace, crying, Help me, help me, I am pursued by rats. The king, when he heard this, got up also, and rang after the king, the prince this, and they, 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 they got really far, and they ran, and they fell into the river, and were never heard of again. bit of a weird way to go isn't it just just that's it never heard of again then the good fairy ran to tell the queen and they went together to the black dungeon where delicia was imprisoned the fairy touched every door with her wand and it sprang open instantly but they had to go through 40 before they came to the princess who was sitting on the floor looking very dejected but when the, queen, when the queen rushed in and kissed her twenty times in a minute and laughed and cried and told Delicia all her history, the princess was wild with delight and was less grossed out by all the kissing from the strange woman, I guess. Then the fairy showed her all the wonderful dresses and jewels she had brought for her, and said, Don't let us waste time. We must go and harangue the people. So she walked first, 
looking very serious and dignified, and wearing a dress the train of which was at least ten ells long. Behind her came the queen, wearing a blue velvet robe, embroidered with gold and a diamond crown that was brighter than the sun itself. Last of all walked Delicia, who was so beautiful that it was nothing sort of short of marvellous. And they proceeded through the streets, returning the salutations of all they met, great or small, and all the people turned and followed them, wondering who their noble ladies could be. Who are they? What are they doing here? <laughs> when the audience hall was quite full, the fairy said to the subjects of the wicked king that they would all accept Delicia, who was a daughter of the jolly king, as their queen. She would undertake to find a suitable husband for her and would promise that during their reign there would be nothing but rejoicing and merrymaking and all dismal things should be entirely banished. Upon this the people cried with one accord, We will, we will, we've been gloomy and miserable too long already. Mm. And they all took hands and danced round the queen in Delicia and the good fairy and singing, Yes, 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 we will, we will. 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 Yes, 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 we will, we will, we will. Wish, 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 we will, we will. Yes, we will. And they all did that in unison. Then there were feasts and fireworks in every street in the town, and early the next morning the fairy, who had been all over the world in the night, brought all over the world, brought back with her in her flying chariot the most handsome and good tempered prince she could find anywhere. Oh, he was so charming. That Delicia loved him. He was delicious, she thought, from the moment their eyes met. And as for him, of course, he got not, couldn't help but think himself the luckiest prince in the whole wide world. Because she had a pair of lovely big shoes. Her shoes were wonderful. And the queen felt that she had really come to the end of her misfortunes at last. And they all lived happily ever after. Now go to sleep.